welcome back to my lecture series. This is Muthamina, Assistant Professor at the Department of Agricultural Engineering. Today we will see the continuity of radioactive effects of greenhouse gases that we have seen under the unit Earth's Climate System under the subject Climate Change and Adaptation for the students of final year 7th semester. Before going into the session, let us have a small recap what we have seen at the previous class. We have seen what are the composition of Earth's atmosphere, what happens at the greenhouse gases, how well the greenhouse uh, effects uh, gases uh, contribute to the greenhouse effect, what is greenhouse gas, what happens at the absorption of energy by the greenhouse gases and uh, we have concluded that carbon dioxide provides a major contribution at the absorption of energy, how well the energy balance of the earth takes place. And what happens here is we have also shown you the radiation balance, the radiation balance where the uh, radiation has been observed by the surface, how the emitted uh, radiation will be contributing to thermal energy, what happens at the latent heat that has been provided by the evapotranspiration and or as well as uh, when the radiation has been emitted by the clouds, uh, by the surface radiation. Also, the observed black radiation by the surface that has been contributed through the greenhouse gases. Today, we will see the primary uh, greenhouse gases that are involved in uh, contributing to it. We have also seen how much percentage of greenhouse gases have been provided. That is, uh, under water vapor, it is contributing to 60%, carbon dioxide to 26%, ozone to 8%, and the other gases to 6%. And what are the human impacts and natural impacts? Now we'll see about the global gas emission. In 2005, estimated worldwide emissions were totally nearly about 39 billion metric tons of greenhouse gases expressed as carbon dioxide equivalents. This represents a 26% increase from 1990. The emissions of carbon dioxide increased by 31% which is particularly important because carbon dioxide accords for nearly three-fourths of the total global emissions. As you guys can see, methane emissions has been increased at least 10% while emissions of nitrous oxide have been increased up to 14%. These emissions of fluorinated gases were more than doubled. This has been uh, pictorically uh, said at your pictograph as I have shown in this PPT. The next is uh, what are the greenhouse gases and how well the sources are combined in providing these kinds of greenhouse gases. What is a sink and the importance of climate. As you guys can see carbon dioxide has been the source of uh, burning the fossil fuel and land use of change uh, that is deforestation. The methane has been provided through biomass burning, enterior fermentation and uh, rice paddies. Nitrous oxide has been produced through biomass burning, fossil fuel contribution and fertilizers. The ozone has been provided through photochemical reactions involving O2 and carbon fluorocarbides has been provided through the industrial production. Next one, the last one is the sulfur dioxide that is volcanoes, coal and biomass burning. These all have been uh, sinking certain things that is oceans uptake photosynthesis. Methane is reactions with the OH and microorganisms uptake by soils. Nitrous oxide is nothing but removal by soils, stratospheric photolysis and the RX reaction with oxygen. Ozone uh, leads to catalytic chemical reactions involving NO X species. CFC has been involved with the dissociation of stratosphere. In the last one, sulfur dioxide deals with dry and wet deposition and it has been reacted with hydroxides. Here, why it is important for the climate? Because uh, carbon dioxide observes infrared radiation affects the stratospheric ozone. And then methane is very important because it is capable of absorbing IR radiation. It affects the troposphere and uh, stratospheric ozone produces CO2. Nitrous oxide absorbs IR and it also affects the stratospheric ozone layer. And also ozone absorbs ultraviolet radiation and IR radiation. CFC absorbs IR and affects the stratospheric O3. Sulfur dioxide is nothing but it helps in forms, uh, forming aerosols which scatters the solar radiation. This is why these greenhouse gases plays a major role in maintaining the greenhouse effect and also to uh, keep the earth's uh, atmosphere in a very warmer condition. 
here as i have said that carb carbon dioxide is a major source because carbon is extensively recycled through the earth system including both the terrestrial and biosphere and the oceans here i have also shown you how we are getting carbon dioxide through the carbon cycle the next one is nothing but the cycle as earth's thermostat because the increased volcanism has always been dealt with the huge quantities of co2 into the atmosphere that results in increase in temperature as the temperature increases the chemical weathering and the marine carbonate deposition also increases which leads to lowering of atmospheric carbon dioxide this is how the uh, carbon dioxide cycle plays as a major role in uh, maintaining the climate behavior so this is what i have shown you at this pictorial uh, representation also as you guys can see uh, physical weathering of silicate rocks and chemical weathering uh, happens while the volcano burst out and the here as i have shown you the transport of organic carbon happens here and the mountain gets uplift he, uh, also here due to the release of volcanic carbon dioxide along mid ocean ridge system the sea floor spreading happens and also the volcanic co2 released to the atmosphere leads to the subduction and metamorphism of the marine carbonate sediments here i'll show you the future co2 level which has been expected because the increase in co2 emission especially in china and developing countries usa is uh, expected to be the emission of about uh, 1577 million metric tons per year and per capita it is uh, 53 metric tons uh, for china it is 1500 that is 1.16 per capita metric tons russia is 410 which contributes to 2.87 india is 383 due to the uh, development of coal 70% and oil 21% which leads to the per capita metric tons of 0.35 japan is about 336 which leads to 2.63 so the global average is 123 as i have shown here the likely to double within 150 years because there is an increased coal usage increased natural gas usage decrease petroleum usage because of the increased cost and decrease supply this is how the co2 level will be at the near future so if we have to maintain the uh, uh, climate in a very same manner without any fluctuation without any change then it is expected for us to observe or utilize limit the co2 emissions that are going to happen so that is how we can reduce the ozone hole and also we can reduce the emissions uh, that are ab observed by the co2 so that the uh, maintenance of greenhouse effect will be at the level of positive manner so this is what i have prepared for today's class see you at the next class thank you